Hello and welcome to Storytime with Mr. Laws. Today we're reading Wayside School Gets a Little Stranger by Lewis Sacker. Chapter 19, Time Out. Miss Zarves taught the class on the 19th story. There is no 19th story and there is no Miss Zarves. You already know that. But how do you explain the cow in her classroom? Miss Sarves drew a triangle on the blackboard. A triangle has three sides, she said, then pointed to each side. One, two, three. She drew a square. A square has four sides. One, two, three, four. She walked around the cow to the other side of the board. She drew a pentagon, a hexagon and a perfect heptagon. A heptagon has seven sides, she said. Miss Sarves was very good at drawing shapes. When most people try to draw heptagons, there's always one side that sticks out funny, but Miss Sarves' heptagon was perfect. Every side was the same length and every angle the same degree. It was a great talent, but nobody appreciated her. Nobody appreciated anything she did. It was like they didn't know she was there. She counted the sides on the heptagon. One, two, three, four. Moo, said the cow. Miss Sarves dropped her chalk. She glared at the cow. I hate this, she shouted. It was a brown cow with a white head. It's all right, Miss Sarves, said Virginia, her best student. I'll get the chalk for you. No, said Miss Sarves. Leave it where it is. The cow made me drop the chalk. The cow should pick it up. Her students gaped at her. I will not continue, said Miss Sarves, until that cow picks up the piece of chalk and draws us an octagon on the board. She folded her arms across her chest, stared at the cow and waited. Ray raised his hand. Yes, Ray, said Miss Sarves, arms still folded across her chest. Um, cows can't pick up chalk, said Ray. Miss Sarves sighed. I know, she said, and I can't teach with a cow in my classroom. No one had ever seen Miss Sarves so upset. She usually had a pleasant disposition. It's OK, Miss Sarves, said Virginia. I don't mind the cow. Yeah, you get used to it after a while, said Ray. What cow? asked Nick. Oh, that one. I forgot it was there. Miss Sarve smiled. She knew her students were trying to make her feel better. Other classrooms have goldfish or hamsters, said Virginia. It's really no different. No, said Miss Sarves. I won't have it. All my life I've tried to be accommodating. I've never been one to complain. And what has it gotten me? A cow, she shook her head. When I was a little girl, my friends never did what I wanted to do, they, she said. I always had to do whatever they wanted to do. And my teacher never picked me in class. She always picked on the kids who just shouted out without raising their hands, even though she said she wouldn't. She'd say, I won't pick you if you don't raise your hand, but then she always did anyway. But I was a good girl. I never shouted out. And she always did things alphabetically, so I was always last, if there was time for me at all. My parents were too busy for me. They always were dressing up and going out to fancy parties. I had to tuck myself in at night and wish myself sweet dreams. She took a tissue out of her sleeve and wiped a tear from her eye. Still, I always tried to keep a smile on my face. Well, not anymore. The days of walk all over Miss Sarves are finished. She threw open her classroom door. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. What are you going to do? asked Virginia. I'm going out there, said Miss Sarves, and I'm not coming back until I get some grease. She stepped outside. She decided she'd go right to the top. So she headed down the stairs to the principal's office. Joy and Mauricia were coming up the stairs. Todd is uglier than stupid, said Mauricia. You're crazy, said Joy. He's stupider than ugly. Oh, teased Mauricia. I'm going to tell Todd you think he's cute. Miss Sarve stepped in front of them. 
What are you doing out of class? she asked. I didn't say he was cute, said Joy. He's just not as ugly as he is stupid. That means you think he's handsome, said Mauricia. Are you going to marry him? Um, excuse me, I asked you a question, said Miss Sarves. Ugh, gross, said Joy. I'm a teacher, said Miss Sarves. That means you're supposed to listen to me. Joy and Mauricia walked right past her. Miss Sarve sighed and continued down to Mr Kidswater's office. She took a deep breath to steady her nerves. She was about to knock, but then she changed her mind and just marched right in. Hey, Kidswater, I want to talk to you, she said. The principal was making a rubber band ball. Do you hear me? asked Miss Sarves. He opened his desk drawer and looked for more rubber bands. If you don't answer me right now, said Miss Sarves, I'm walking out the door and never coming back. Mr Kidswater pressed the buzzer on his phone. Uh, Miss Knight, you need to order more rubber bands. That's it, said Miss Sarves. I'm leaving. Goodbye, I quit. She walked out of the school and took a deep breath of fresh air. Please, don't go, Miss Sarves, said a voice behind her. Startled, she turned around. We need you, said a bald-headed man. He was standing between two other men. Both had black moustaches and one carried a black briefcase. The bald man didn't have a moustache. Can you see me? she asked. Yes, of course, said the bald man, and we appreciate all your hard work. You do? All three nodded very sincerely. Miss Sarves was touched. I've been teaching for 30 years she said, and nobody has ever said that before. Well, it's not easy being a teacher, said the bald man, and I don't get any respect, said Miss Sarves. People treat me like I'm a nobody. It's not easy being a teacher, said the man with the briefcase. You have to work long hours for very little money. I've never got paid, said Miss Sarves, and this is the first time in 30 years I've ever left the building. It's not easy being a teacher, agreed the other man with a moustache. Even the book I'm reading to my class, said Miss Sarves, the author makes fun of teachers. It's a tragedy, said the bald man. Then why do I do it, asked Miss Sarves. Why teach any more? I could quit and nobody would care. The children need you. All three men said together. Miss Sarves sighed. I like to teach, she said. I really do. I love the children. It's just... She stopped and wiped her eyes. The man with the briefcase opened it. He took out a handkerchief and handed it to Miss Sarves. Oh, thank you, she said, blew her nose and then gave it back to him. He placed it back in his briefcase. Can you at least get the cow out of my classroom? she asked. The bald man smiled. I'll see what I can do, he said. Miss Sarf smiled as she slowly shook her head. Then she turned and walked back into the building. Chapter 20, Elevators. Mr Kidswater's voice came over the loudspeaker. Good morning, boys and girls. There was the usual pause. I have a very important announcement, said Mr. K. Elevators have been installed in Wayside School. For a second, the kids on the 30th floor were too stunned to speak. Then everyone went crazy. Yahoo! yelled Cherie. Hot diggity dog! shouted Damien. Everyone was yelling and jumping. Zippity doodah! shouted Mrs. Drizil. Cheers could be heard coming from every classroom in Wayside School. The higher the classroom, the louder the cheers. Now, before you all rush out and use the elevators, said Mr Kidswater, I want to talk a little bit about elevator safety. I don't want the same kind of chaos that we have on the stairs every day. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, when you go up the stairs, stay to the right. When you come down the stairs, stay to the left, but still everyone keeps bumping into each other. Well, that won't happen on the elevators. 
I have personally designed a special safety system. There are two elevators. One is blue, one is red. When you want to go up, you take the blue elevator. When you want to go down, you take the red elevator. It's that simple. It can't go wrong. The blue one only goes up and the red one only goes down. By the way, has anyone seen my coffee pot? And so at last, Wayside School got elevators. A blue one and a red one. They each worked perfectly, one time, and never could be used again. I'll see you tomorrow for two more chapters. Bye for now.